Ziggy Goo has dropped a new single. It's called It Goes Like. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. And I'm only laughing <laughs> because I was shown this my, by my fucking girl, Joyce. Big up, Joyce, wherever you are. And now I can't get this fucking stupid, crappy song out of my head. And I'm wondering, I'm sat here wondering to myself, has Peggy Goo always had like ghost producers? Has she maybe fallen off in terms of her production? Or is my ear just not attuned to her flipping style of music? Or am I just not advanced enough culturally, um, artistically to kind of get what she's doing here? Because this song sounds like pure and utter garbage, especially when you compare it to like Starry Night, especially when you compare it to fucking, you know, Starry Night maybe is a bad example because that might have been like a Magnus Opus. Every artist is allowed to have one in their career, um, but it should also shouldn't be the one that kind of people use as a barometer to sort of judge your talent. Sometimes you have, you know, the ability to create one just live, timeless track that gets played again and again and again all over the world. But it doesn't mean because you did that, that everything that comes after um, has to match that level. But still, it doesn't even go as far as matching like the remix. I, I was saying to somebody the other day, like, you know, one of my favorite remixes ever is uh, Peggy Goose remix for um, the song um, At Night by Shakedown. Um, it's an acid remix and it is absolutely phenomenal. I, I used to play that out so often. It's an absolute slapper. Um, so it's hard to figure out that that person who made that track made this absolute hot garbage that I guess was debuted in Printworks one time. Let's play it now so you can hear what this flipping thing sounds like. Because to me, it sounds like hot mess. Only behind me cause it's something that it's on, it's on my mind. I guess it goes like that. Like, what is that? Like, what is that? That sounds absolutely horrible. And I don't know if it's maybe me that I'm just not attuned to it and it might end up being a summer hit and a summer smash, but I just can't see it. It sounds like the kind of thing that's going to age terribly. Like, you hear that maybe in a couple of weeks, you're going to be so annoyed by it. It's going to be the kind of song that will instantly send you to the fucking bathrooms, to the toilets of a club for a quick bump or a piss, or to a smoking area for a cigarette. Even if you don't smoke, just to kind of get away from hearing, nah, 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 nah. Like, what the fuck is that, man? But again, a part of me also doesn't want to go too far into it or too deep into it because, I don't know, I just it just feels like Peggy is such a easy target to kind of dunk on because she kind of makes it easy um i guess in some regards and because generally people everyone tends to kind of agree you know maybe she's not the greatest but i think there is a also a little bit hint of genius about the ability to just like i don't know to be who she is basically in life it kind of just makes me think that maybe i've just approached life in general very very differently because the way she's promoting it on her instagram you would legitimately think this this was the hit this was the song this was the one um let's check her instagram stories because i'm sure she's got some stuff on there that i want to quickly comment on here via instagram stories that really made me think like this girl is like really operating on a whole entire different frequency what's she saying here about the, the drama and release date let's hear this what's she saying here morning I'm excited and nervous, I guess. I'm feeling butterflies on my stomach. Do you think, do you guys, do you guys think Peggy Goo's got like a fake deep voice like that woman that got done for fucking the startup? What's it, what's her name called again? What's that lady called that got done? Uh, Feranos, Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah. Do you think Peggy Goo's got an Elizabeth Holmes things going on where she purposely puts on a deep voice because she knows she has to navigate the fucking treacherous waters of the patriarchy that is <laughs> modern living <laughs> and the flipping, you know, cisgendered um, domination of men within electronic music. So the only way to kind of navigate it is to put on this husky voice. What do you think? But uh, okay, cool. Let's continue here. For those who ask, basically, it was merch giveaway, um, exclusive. We love the word exclusive. Um, six o'clock somewhere in London. I will have to let you know the location in the last minute. <gasps> Oh, she's doing like a scavenger hunt for the track. So, yeah, for those who ask, I'm very happy to be back in London. Um, it's happening at six o'clock today in central London. You will know. Okay, let's continue. More posts here. I don't know what's happening. It, she's, this is the lyrics for the song. <laughs> it goes like, na, na, na. 
I can't explain. I've got a feeling that I just, I can't erase. It's just a feeling that I won't, won't leave behind because it's something that it on, it's on my mind. I guess it goes like na 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 na, na 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 na. What the fuck is this shit? Honestly, Peggy, man, what is this shit? What are you doing to us? Like, and there's a whole entire promo run around this. Coming to London, birthday cakes, streaming, the t-shirts, and whatever. But she's got a very clean tongue, though. She definitely scrapes her tongue. So big up, big up Peggy on the hygiene there. Good, we'd like to see a good clean tongue. Um, congratulations, cake in bed. Balloons at some fancy hotel. Cover art, flowers from people. People sending her flowers or putting out a single. Like, you love that for about her. She kind of looks like one of the characters from the Flintstones here, innit? With the hair and the glasses and the pearl necklace, no? She looks like someone from the Flintstones. I actually thought this was fancy dress, but I guess it's not. I think this is a Vivian Westwood top, so my apologies if it's not fancy dress. But she kind of looks like someone from the Flintstones, a little bit here. She seems happy. And she's got dancers. This song is fucking trash man i'm sorry this song is fucking trash what the fuck is this okay this is her somewhere in oh i guess this is um near tottenham court road isn't it the park near tottenham court road that's the thing that's very interesting about peggy though like there's not many djs out there i think especially female djs that have so many female fans like i keep saying like one of the things that surprised me at a former workplace that i was at a little startup there will be girls in it that i'll describe as quote-unquote normies and they were not really into like you know uh dance music electronic music but one thing they would always do whenever she would play at fucking village underground or anywhere around the shortage kind of area maybe even x or y i'm not really too sure but i remember them all buying tickets like i don't know 12 plus girls in this office would all flip and get dressed after work to go and see peggy goo fucking dj i was like whoa that's pretty cool right because usually a lot of female women DJs in flipping the scene usually have a whole fucking army of horny incelly type of guys that are fans of them number one because you know they secretly want to fuck or because they just you know they just like to oogle at them from afar but you don't really see a lot of girls out there seeing them so it's quite cool that she's inspired a whole legion of young women and shit who kind of you know look at her as like a motivation inspiration whatever it may be um it's quite cool but it's funny also because you know on the other flip side of it she won't spit on any of these guys if they're if they're, she, if they're on fire do you know what i mean the amount of stories we've all heard about her being a fucking menace behind the scenes is more evident that most likely if, if she had to you know interact with these people in real life they would they probably wouldn't be fans of her <laughs> but it's cool anyway, to see regardless look at that security guards and all sorts that she's a fucking kardashian this is fucking nuts. Let's, just, let's go back to that video again. Fan love, fan love, fan love. So they made a little catwalk thing for the voguing. I love how she's fucking, what's that thing called? I have like, I, have, I, have, I love how she's, um, what's that word people use when you were fucking steal shit from different cultures? I love how she's fucking, I don't know, what is it co-opting? I don't know what the word is fucking, of, I'm losing it right now. But <laughs> I love how she's co-opting queer and gay community for promote this fucking video. Like, I would love to know how many actual gay queer people she's actually friends with in real life. I have a feeling it's not more than five. <laughs> That's my own opinion. But let's see. song is so trash man what's happening here people are voguing to the song yeah okay i'm out i'm out no more no more i can't do this anymore so yeah the song is trash but let's hear what she said to mix mike it goes as follows the dreamy balearic inspired track marks her first release on new music in nearly two years combining a bouncy beat poppy melodies and her own vocals and bending guitar style notes to form a surefire summer anthem speaking about the title peggy goo says there's a feeling we all know but it's hard to describe that feeling of love and warmth and excitement when you're surrounded with friends and loved ones and the energy it speaks for itself it's difficult to put into words but to me it, <laughs> it goes na 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 
<laughs> Honestly, I fucking hate it already. The C footage of the recent debut airing at the cut um airing of the cut during the Prince work set, blah blah blah. London and the UK have always been a special place for me, she says. It's a city where I discovered my love for music and a place that has always shown me much support. So it was an honor to choose print to close print works and the perfect place to debut the track. Did she what? Was she the last person to ever play at print works? Fucking hell. What a result. Peggy, Peggy's busy with a tour throughout the summer with dates across Europe, including her own Pleasure Gardens Festival in London's Finsbury Park in August 6th. Um, a feature showcase of artists on the Goodwood Records. Okay, she got her own festival. Who's playing at her own festival? I've never heard of this shit. It's available on Ticketmaster. That's how you know she's caked up, boy. Peggy must be like Live Nation, WME kind of contact, isn't it, right? She must be on that kind of level. She's got Ticketmaster shit on her stuff. Okay, there's no, yeah, she doesn't even have booking info. There's not even booking info on her bio. That's how big of a person she is. <laughs> booking info does not exist. <laughs> um, Ticketmaster for this Finsbury Park shit is available there, as you can see, or 6th of August. Who's actually playing as well on this? Oh, that's a C. Um, let's see if we can see this. Who's actually playing alongside her at this event, 2023, and line up? Let's see what it says here. Uh, ba 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 ba. Okay, cool. Let's get this. We get the image of the fucking fly. Oh no, but it's actually down there on RA. What am I doing? Let's scroll down and see what this says. This pleasure. Peggy who presents Pleasure Gardens in Frisbee Park Sunday, the sixth of August. The lineup features special requests: Mum Dance, Matisse, DMX Crew, Dukwa, and Hiva. Hmm. Not something you'd go overboard to kind of pay for, but I guess it's good because she's promoting people on her label and shit. So that's obviously decent to kind of check out. What are the prices saying for the actual event? 50, 60, 100? Oof, 100. Fucking hell. VIP only available. And a backstage pass is available um, for £151. Fucking hell. She knows what she's doing when it comes to that sort of stuff. But yeah, the track is absolutely dog awful. I don't really mind the artwork, to be honest. I think that's fairly fine. The outfit she wore on a day to, for the release is pretty horrendous. She looks like a character from the Flintstones, but I, feel, I really like the vibe of this outfit. And even the artwork itself looks really good. She's always got really good art direction and stage design and shit. But it's just a shame the fucking music is just so underwhelming, which is surprising. Again, like I said, because Starry Night, At Home, um the remix um there's another one too um what's that one called um it's i think the title is like korean it's like ingane or something i forgot the title track or what it was called but i remember that track being fairly decent so the record the production record is looking a bit spotty so i don't know if this is a evidence that she had ghost producers because the dip has been so you know it's not there's no consistency really it feels like i've crossed her tracks um you know there's one really good one one okay one one mediocre one and the rest of the shit so i don't know if that's evidence of it or if it's just evidence that you know when you're a really successful dj and you're touring all over the place it's hard to make good music because you're always playing you don't have time to be in the studio and shit and craft you know and put together an absolute masterpiece maybe that's the case i don't really know but either way the song is absolutely brutal and um yeah if this becomes a hit i'll be shocked but stranger things have happened stranger things have happened 